Hi guys, fun fact. At this moment, there are 67 keyboard shortcut keys defined for UiPath Studio. Wow. But does it really pay off learning all of them? I decided to go for the 80-20 approach, where I would learn the ones that would save the most time and that I would be able to use most frequently. Of course, I would leave aside the obvious ones like Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V, or Ctrl-Z, Ctrl-Y. So, let us jump right into my top 10, just after this quick announcement. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks! Ladies and gentlemen, ranking number 10 on my top 10 keyboard shortcuts list is the F2 keyboard shortcut, rename the current activity. I don't do it always in practice, uh, but I should do it more often. And using F2 to rename the activity would probably be a good reminder for us all to do that. Now we could of course right click the activity and select the rename option or just double click on the activity display name and type over the new name, but the fastest way to do it is to just select activity and press F2. It automatically assigns, uh, it automatically selects the displayed name already, and we can just change that to desired value. On the ninth position, on the top 10, we can find the Shift F2 keyboard shortcut. This is for adding an annotation, but the fastest way to do that would be just to click to select activity and click Shift F2 and that would open directly the annotation panel. We can just write whatever we have to remember. We should add annotations whenever we maybe change some properties on the properties panel that we want to remember later. Uh, or maybe we can put a reason here why we changed some properties. Uh, it helps later on with debugging and it helps if somebody else reads our code. And the eighth place on my top 10 keyboard shortcuts list goes to F2 again. This time it is being used in another context uh, in that of adding a delay to a recording activity. Let's say we have a notepad application that we want to save a notepad file and we'd like to access the save menu via click and not via its shortcut. So to access the sub menu we can just indicate on screen the selector again. We'd have to click F2. It gives us three seconds to go to our desired selection and then click the menu and that would select our menu here and create a selector. So when we need to access any sub-menus, uh, it is really useful to use the F2 shortcut to buy us some time to navigate to the desired menu. Ranking number seven on the list is Control T. This is used to place an activity inside the try section of a try catch activity. If we are unsure that one activity will be successful all the time. Let's just say for demonstration purposes that we're not sure that this list will be successfully created, initialized all the time, we can just press Ctrl T and this would place our activity, our previously selected activity in the try section of a try catch. And then we just have to go to the catch section, decide if we want to have maybe a system, a system exception and if needed, do something uh, to catch this uh, exception. Number six on the top 10 keyboard shortcuts list goes to Control Space. Control Space displays the IntelliPrompt menu, which normally should come automatically, but in some cases it doesn't. Uh, let's suppose we have a variable or we have several list variables 
we have a list of strings and we have a list of integers and we change our mind and we want to initialize a list of integers instead of a list of strings and we we know we have several list variables but don't remember which ones and we just want to delete part of the variable name and then know what else is available to use um, nothing comes up automatically so if we press control space we would get the IntelliPrompt menu and have some options to select from for example if instead of list of strings we want to initialize a list of numbers we would choose the next variable and change the type of the elements inside the list. So this is really use useful when the uh, IntelliPrompt menu doesn't pop up automatically. We can just trigger it by pressing space. Yeah, in most cases it will come up automatically, but not always. Places 5 and 4 go to Ctrl D and Ctrl E. These are used to comment in and out an activity. We can do that by right-clicking and selecting Disable Activity and Enable Activity, but it is much faster to just click Ctrl D to comment out an activity or disable it and then Ctrl E to enable it back. This is something that we would probably use quite often during testing and bug fixing and it's just a, a nice shortcut to, to know and to use. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the top three and the second and third prizes go to Ctrl M and Ctrl Shift M. These are used to create in and out arguments on the fly of the same type as the required type of the activity. In most workflows, we need to interact with other workflows and we need to pass arguments back and forth. So let's take an example of an argument, a random, random name. We will just delete this for demonstration purposes. We delete it and we will create it again on the fly here. So to create an out argument, we will type Ctrl Shift M, set argument, we will set its name, and this creates the argument automatically with the direction out. And if we needed to create an in argument, we would just type Ctrl M and then the argument name. And this will create automatically the argument with the in direction. And the winner is Ctrl K. Now this is probably no surprise and most of you are using this heavily. Ctrl K is used to create a variable on the fly directly in, a, in an activity of the same type as the required type of the activity. So if we wanted to use uh, name 2 here, we would just click Ctrl K, very similar to Ctrl M and Ctrl Shift M. And we will just create the second variable and it gets the string type automatically. And this was my top 10 keyboard shortcut activities. Hey, if you are getting value out of this video, could you please hit the like button? Thanks. And that was it. I hope you were able to pick at least one or two useful shortcuts that you are not using until now. If you are using any other shortcuts uh, that you might find useful and were not mentioned here, please specify them in the comment section below. See you next time!